Way safe distribution hitch was just probably number four or five in my trailer upgrades. I start, this trailer started off as a 18 foot trailer, flatbed with wood deck. I put the diamond plate on more than 20 years ago now because the wood rotted out. But it had two 3,500 pound axles with five lug wheels and kind of smaller tires. I found Trailer Parts Unlimited in Huntsville, Texas. They had 6,000 pound axles, new springs, six lug wheels, and tires, all for around $1,200. This was right at the beginning of COVID. By the time they came in last year, they were more than $1,200, but not that much more. So I did that upgrade last summer. Now that I can haul 12,000 pounds on the trailer, I had to redo my hitch. So I did, went from a two inch kind of chinzy stamp steel coupler to a two and five sixteenths, much more substantial coupler and better safety chains, new safety chain latches. And now I'm sure I can do more. I was, it was making my cow dog suburban squat when I had something on it. So I got the way safe true toe weight distribution hitch. That's all well and good, except it's heavy. It's a lot of pieces, and I need to store it somewhere. So I want to get a toolbox. That's what this is. The only thing is, the all the different pieces go in here, and the support arms are actually 36 inches long. So from here. Over to there. This is a 39 inch tall long, long toolbox and it's just the right height to put all my stuff in. My jack, anything else I need to do my trailer. However, up here on my trailer I have space limitations. My chain tie down ratchets or I'm not sure what they're called. These things I have 38 inches between them. That's a 39 inch wide toolbox. I have 12 and a half inches between here and my jack. So I needed a 37 inch by 12 inch toolbox. And I put my breakaway brake and my wiring junction up here for easy access instead of burying them down here somewhere where I got to lay down to work on them, I got them up from up here. So any toolbox I have has to go above here, between here, and between there. No one makes such a toolbox. So I have to build, I bought the 39 inch toolbox. It showed up from Amazon yesterday. Now I got to mount it. So I put all the pieces for the way safe hitch and my jack and everything else I carry with me in the trailer because I'm tired of pulling the whole thing off of the truck and going and putting it in the shop, taking up five feet of floor space and it's heavy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make a shelf. Somewhere around here, I haven't figured out exactly how high yet. Come out, it's a 13 inch wide, I'll probably come out 10 inches. Shelf there, piece here, probably like that, and weld it on. So that's today's project. Anyway, when you have no space, you have to make space. I'm going vertical. To make my shelf, I need to cut the angle iron at 13 inches because it's a 13 inch toolbox with a two inch angle iron on the trailer I'm going to weld into. So that'll give me 11 inches underneath the toolbox. I don't want to have the sharp edge of this thing sticking out and grab my hand somehow. To cut it, I'm going to use one of the best tools I have. This is a Milwaukee Fuel M18 cordless uh, bandsaw, portable bandsaw. This mount is by Swag. S-W-A-G. This is made just to hold this. And the Swag stand even comes with Get some safety glasses on. 
the swag stand comes with a piece of Velcro. The Velcro goes around the trigger. So all you gotta do is, once I get back on here, push the little reset, put the Velcro, it holds the trigger on. This thing is so cool. And with the do the velcro so yes if I tie it down and I have in the past now that the angle is cut I need to mark where to drill and tap my holes I want to go four inches in from one end so I'm just going to use a combination square four inches in three inches from the other end I'll put them both about two inches in. And then it's one and a half, so that means three quarter of an inch. It's halfway across. here let's see if I got it right this one is going to be driver side so that means this one needs to be four on this end four on this end get on the line so the number and then three on this end Three quarter. Well, that didn't work too good. So, should have the safety glasses on while hammering, but they weren't. Now let me bring the camera over here to the drill press. Going three-eighths holes, I have a 2164 is chucked up and drill on through. into my vice. That was dumb.
tap the holes. Move back over to here. And yeah. that should work. Three eighths, 18 tap. Actually, move this to the real vise. Redo the camera again. Nothing was moving on me. Until you get resistance, back up, clear it, keep going, and pretty soon you will get it all the way in. Oh, there's more resistance. As it gets the taper on the end of the tap, fills with, cuts more threads, so pretty soon, something this thin, I don't normally put cutting oil in. But I always pull the handle off so I don't booger the threads. Taking it down. I'm taking it out. as this is, I'm probably going to end up putting a nut on the bottom anyway. But we'll thread it into here. I have a nut on the bottom as a lock nut. So the next, I got to do the other side, but it's the same as this side. And then wire brush where I'm going to weld it, figure out where I'm going to weld it, then wire brush it, then weld it. I forgot to test the tap. 3 8 by 18 thread pitch bolt. And goes right on in. So I went and got the bolt, so I was going to do my next piece. And ooh, need to show this that it does work. Well, the other one did. <laughs> Maybe it doesn't work. There it goes. Just trying to start it sideways. All right. So now I've left a mess on my table and my drill press. I am by no means a queen freak. But having a nice clean surface to work on makes it last longer and makes what you're doing more accurate. I keep my shop vac plugged in and right here just for this kind of thing. I'm sure the video will show how much time that was, but I'm thinking 30 seconds to a minute at the most. And my steel, the only thing I use WD-40 for, water disbursement 40, is to keep this thing clean and rust-free. Other than that, I don't use WD-40 on anything else I'm using. But it works really good to keep my drill press nice and clean and rust-free. Keep the work table clean. 
all is well. All right, now we got to go measure, grind, and weld. I just came over here, put the use vice grips to hold the angle iron up so I can test fit because I can't go wire wheeling or grinding paint off until I know where I want it. And empty the toolbox. So now it only weighs about 30, 40 pounds. Hopefully they'll hold up. So I got plenty of room over here to do my down there. Let's see for sure. I got room over here to do this. That's kind of in the way, but I can do it. I'm gonna move this way a little bit. I can do the do that jack. It looks like I'm gonna have interference with my spare tire though. For jackknifing purposes. Yeah, I can still do this. No problem. I will have to see about that. Might need to come down some, but I got plenty of room for this. In fact, I can probably come down another two inches, maybe three inches down. Let's go down just a little bit and see what happens. Let's see how it feels. Give it a level. Let's keep going to our level. measure it out, make it even, but if I can get it to where it is below the spare tire on flat terrain, oh, total collapse, well, get to start over again, yep, that filmed it, huh, interesting. scripts didn't hold it or the level was too much extra weight <laughs> who knows yeah I didn't have the vice grip on all the way let's put it right there let's put it right there Sit there aside, see where we go. Let's see. The trailer is half a bubble that way. So, this thing here should end up being half a bubble the same way. Not very accurate, but enough to be able to see if I have room to do what I want to do. All we're doing now is test fitting. I can still get to that. Walk around the trailer. I can still get to that. We're not below the tire yet. But I got room here too. I can come down some more. Go ahead and do that. Tighten this up just a hair. Just a little bit more. Maybe it'll stay this time. I still have room for that. Making something fit. Got to plan it all out. That's kind of tight there. I'm not sure I like that. 
but it'll work. Got room there. I can still swing this. We're still in the way of the tire, but not as much as we were. And if the trailer with the way safe weight distribution hitch, the truck will be higher. So it's going to be closer to clearing. But I've never come close to jackknifing. So I'm going to go with it here. I'm going to measure it, get them equal on both sides, then mark it and start going from here, that height. So I can live with it. Live with that latch right here, being limited access. But all I gotta do is make sure it's on. I can do that. After getting everything measured, I put them in, welded the angle arm pieces in, threw some paint on it so that it won't rust. Went and ate lunch while paint was drying. Now I gotta make everything fit. And this, I want it, let's see if that works, about there, let me see if that other side looks right. Plenty of room to do that, so now, that's where I want it. I just need to mark each of the holes on the bottom of the toolbox. Those marked. Two bars over. Whoops. Punch each one. Drill each one. Holes line up to everything. There it is. Toolbox to hold all of my
junk that goes in the on the trailer with me. So all this stuff here gets to go into the new toolbox.